After multiple attempts over the last 13 years, Remedy Entertainment is finally about to release Alan Wake 2. And for fans of the original 2010 psychological thriller cult classic, the excitement is palpable. But of course, given how long it's been since the launch of the first game, there are obviously going to be many who will be playing Alan Wake 2 without much knowledge of its predecessor. As such, to help you catch up in time for the sequel, or to help refresh your memory, as the case may be, here we're going to recap the full events of Alan Wake, its two expansions, its standalone sequel, Alan Wake's American Nightmare, and the events of Control's second DLC, AWE, which firmly places the Alan Wake franchise in the Remedy Connected universe. Without further ado then, let's dive right in. As Alan Wake's story kicks off, our titular protagonist isn't exactly in a good place in his life. He is a renowned and successful writer, but after having spent years of his professional life writing crime fiction about a hard-boiled detective named Alex Casey, Alan has grown dissatisfied with the commercialized nature of his work. Wanting to write something that appeals to him, on a more personal level, he's killed off Casey's character, though things haven't exactly worked out for the writer the way he would have hoped. For two years now, he's been suffering from crippling writer's block, and that has been taking a toll on him in his personal life as well, with his relationship with his wife, Alice, seemingly being on its last legs. On the advice of his friend and agent Barry Wheeler, Alan and Alice leave for a vacation, hoping to fix their marriage and help Alan get over his writer's block, and head to the small, remote mountain town of Bright Falls, Washington. Upon arriving in Bright Falls, Alan goes to meet a man named Carl Stuckey, from whom he's supposed to retrieve the keys of the cabin where he and Alice are supposed to be staying. Instead of Stuckey, however, Alan is met by a mysterious, and more than just a little creepy, old woman garbed in black attire fit for a funeral, who hands him the keys. Alan and Alice reach the cabin, which is on a small scenic island in the middle of a local volcanic lake called Cauldron Lake, and this is where things begin to go monumentally wrong. At the cabin, Alice tells Alan that the reason they're here in Bright Falls is because she wants him to meet with a famous local psychologist named Dr. Emil Hartman, who specializes in working with people of an artistic persuasion. Alan doesn't react to this very well, and in a fit of rage, he storms out. While he's cooling down, however, he hears a commotion coming from inside the cabin, along with cries for help from Alice. He rushes back in, only to see Alice being dragged out and pulled deep into the lake by something that can only be described as supernatural. Alan jumps into the lake after his wife, though he instantly blacks out. When he wakes up, he finds himself behind the wheel in a car that's crashed, with no memory at all of how he's ended up there. Not long afterward, he starts getting swarmed and attacked by vicious, shadowy creatures, while also having repeated encounters with a mysterious figure in a diving suit who keeps leaving behind pages of a horror novel titled Departure. That, curiously enough, is a name that rings a bell for Alan. It's the name of the novel he'd been planning on writing next but could never actually get around to thanks to his writer's block. And when he reads the pages of the manuscript, he realizes that not only have they been written by him, even though he has absolutely no memory of writing them, but also seem to be describing events that he's currently in the middle of. The shadowy creatures that he's been fighting off using light as a weapon, for instance, are referred to as the Taken in his pages, and it seems they're actually the people of Bright Falls who have been possessed by an unknown dark force. Alan also has a run-in with Carl Stuckey, the man he was supposed to meet when he first arrived in Bright Falls, but upon learning that he too has become one of the Taken, is forced to put him down. Soon, Alan is able to make his find Bright Falls Sheriff, Sarah Breaker, though when he tells her about what happened to Alice in the cabin, she tells him that there's been no cabin at Cauldron Lake since it sank in a volcanic eruption decades ago. Believing him to be having a mental episode of some sort, she takes Alan to the police station, where his friend and agent Barry also arrives not long afterward. At the police station, Alan is also visited by Dr. Emil Hartman, the psychologist Alice had arranged for him to meet with in the first place, who suggests to him that a stay at his psychiatric hospital at Cauldron Lake Lodge could help him. Alan, as you might expect, doesn't take kindly to that suggestion and punches the doctor in response. Meanwhile, at the station, Alan is contacted by a man named Mott, who claims to be Alice's kidnapper and tells Alan to meet with him alone to discuss his demands for her safe return. Alan and Barry meet with Mott, who tells them that in exchange for Alice, he wants all the pages of the departure manuscript. Giving no explanation as to why that's what he wants, he flees from the scene, and Alan and Barry soon set out to start collecting more pages of the manuscript. 
During this time, Barry also explains the Cauldron Lake Cabin's history to Alan. Decades ago, in the 1960s, it was owned by a poet named Thomas Zane, whose fiancée, Barbara Jagger, drowned in the lake, while not long afterward, a volcanic eruption destroyed and sunk the island, killing Zane in the process. Curiously enough, however, all of this was only ever recorded by a local woman named Cynthia Weaver, who's now viewed by everyone as something of a recluse. Alan and Barry's search for the manuscript proves successful, though not without caveats. On their search, they cross paths with Robert Nightingale, a former FBI agent who's been investigating Alan for quite some time for reasons unknown, and seems to be all too willing to kill Alan without a second thought. He's able to escape the crazed former agent's attempts on his life, however, and runs to the meeting point where he was supposed to hand over the manuscript to the kidnapper. When he arrives, however, he sees Mott already meeting with someone he recognizes, the creepy old woman who handed him the cabin's keys all the way back at the beginning of the game. And she's no ordinary woman, as it turns out, and has Mott in her grip using otherworldly dark powers. Alan witnesses Ma telling the old woman that he never really kidnapped Alice and that he'd just been following orders from his boss. We'll get back to him in a bit. In the chaos that ensues, the old woman or the dark force or whatever she is attacks both Alan and the kidnapper and Alan is, once again, hurled into Cauldron Lake, at which point he loses consciousness again. When he comes to, he finds himself in Dr. Hartman's psychiatric hospital, where the doctor tries to tell him that he's been experiencing a psychotic break, a rejection of reality triggered by the drowning and death of his wife, and that everything he claims to have experienced since then has merely been happening in his mind. Alan thoroughly refutes this notion, however, concluding that he's being deceived, a conclusion he arrives at with encouragement from fellow patients Odin and Tor Anderson, who are former rock musicians who say they've experienced with Cauldron Lake's supernatural elements, and that he's definitely not crazy. Soon afterward, the hospital is attacked by the Taken, and amidst the chaos, Alan is able to escape with Barry's help. While they're escaping, they also learn that Mott was hired by Dr. Emil Hartman, who was trying to use him to lure Alan to himself. Apparently, Hartman is more than familiar not only with the properties of Cauldron Lake, but also with the power that Alan's writing has to change and manipulate reality, and his goal was to harness that power for his own purposes. After Alan and Barry escape from the hospital, they finally begin putting the pieces together and learning the truth about what exactly has been going on in Bright Falls. He also gets back to his memories of the time between him jumping into the lake to save Allie and him waking up in a crashed car, a week that he has no memory of, but one where he apparently wrote the horror novel Departure. As it turns out, Cauldron Lake is home to a mysterious, extremely powerful entity known as the Dark Presence, and the lake also has the power to turn works of art into reality. It is this power, exactly, that the Dark Presence has been trying to use to try and escape from the lake and out into the world. Back in the 60s, it tried to use the poet Thomas Zane for the same purposes by pulling his fiancée, Barbara Jagger, into the lake, who it turns out was the creepy old woman Alan has seen a few times now. Zane used his writing to bring Barbara back to life, but after realizing that it wasn't really her, but an approximation of her containing the Dark Presence, he decided to undo his mistake. Through his writing, he caused a volcanic explosion that sunk the cabin and the island it was on, while also killing him in the process, sealing the Dark Presence back inside the lake, and leaving Jagger, the old woman, or this demonic new version of her, behind. It also revealed that the mysterious figure in a diving suit that Alan had seen leaving behind pages of departure was Zane himself. And what about the events of present day? Well, as you may have guessed by now, it was the dark presence that kidnapped Alice and has been manipulating Alan into writing departure, hoping that through his writing he'll try to get her back and release it in the process. Soon, however, Alan and Barry are arrested by Robert Nightingale and brought to the police station. The station is attacked by the Taken, however, with Nightingale being taken and consumed by the Dark Presence. With the help of Sheriff Breaker, who now has no option but to believe Alan and his seemingly deranged claims, which of course are not deranged after all, Alan and Barry are able to escape, and they quickly make their way to meet Cynthia Weaver, the woman who wrote and recorded the events of the volcanic eruption that destroyed the cabin decades ago. 
Weaver tells them that Zane left behind the means with which Alan could defeat the Dark Presence. And it is, interestingly enough, something that has also had personal meaning to Alan since his childhood. The Clicker, which is a simple light switch, but purportedly has the power to defeat the forces of darkness. With the Clicker in his possession, Alan dives into Cauldron Lake once again, where he finds himself in a surreal, twisted, shifting alternate dimension known as the Dark Place, a place that is prone to being manipulated by works of art that then manifest in the real world. In the Dark Place, Alan encounters Jagger, the Dark Presence's avatar, and using the Clicker, he's able to defeat her. At this point, however, he realizes that he must not repeat the same mistake Zane made, that as a dramatic work of literature, the story that he has written and manifested into reality must end with balance, which Zane was unable to do. Using his writing, he helps Alice escape, freeing her into the real world, but to strike the aforementioned balance, traps himself in the Dark Place. He ends the story with the words, it's not lake, it's an ocean. That is where Alan Wake ends, though we see him again, trapped in the dark place in the game's two post-launch expansions, The Signal and The Rider, which reveal that while trapped in this horrific reality, his mind has become fractured. With the help of Thomas Zane, Alan is able to fix up and get a grip on himself again, following which he decides to start writing again and use his writing to escape from the dark place. One of those attempts is seen in the game Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which sees him writing scripts of a supernatural anthology TV series called Night Springs, a show that he actually used to screenwrite for in the real world early on in his writing career. Alan Wake's American Nightmare sees the titular writer having to face off against an evil, maniacal doppelganger of himself known as Mr. Scratch, who is obsessed with taking everything in Alan Wake's life away from him. At the end of the game, Alan is able to defeat Mr. Scratch, just not as permanently as he would have hoped, though his attempt to escape from the dark place proves to be an unsuccessful one, and the first of many, as it would turn out. From here, we jump forward several years and arrive at the events of AWE, the second post-launch DLC released for Control. In the years that have passed since Alan Wake's events, the Federal Bureau of Control, a secret government agency that investigates and deals with paranatural events, has been keeping an eye on the town of Bright Falls, and even has someone stationed there in the form of Agent Kieran Estevez. During its investigation of Cauldron Lake, the FBC also interrogated Hartman and seized all of his research and writings on it. Following which, Hartman, in a last-ditch attempt to capture the power he had been obsessed with for so long, dove into the lake. He was soon possessed by the Dark Presence, though, after which the FBC captured him and brought him back to its headquarters, the oldest house. In the time since the events of the first Alan Wake, the FBC has also had contact with Alice Wake, who informs them that she's been having reoccurring nightmares of her husband, or as she describes him, a monster wearing her husband's skin. This terrifying, murderous version of Alan, presumably Mr. Scratch, is apparently intent on finding and murdering her. But the FBC cannot do much to follow up on any of this, since it has major issues of its own to deal with, in the form of an invasion by an otherworldly supernatural force known as the Hiss, which it is revealed in AWE was created by none other than Alan himself. He wrote the Hiss into existence, intending to use control protagonist Jesse Faden as the hero for his new story, which he wanted to use to help him escape from the Dark Place. However, Hartman has been able to absorb the powers of the Hiss, which have combined with the Dark Presence within him to turn him into a terrifying monstrosity. However, Jesse Faden, who has been the director of the FBC for a while at this point, is able to beat Hartman. As the AWE DLC comes to an end, Jesse is told by FBC agents that they've received alerts of an altered world event in the town of Bright Falls, though curiously enough, the date of the event is several years into the future, and by the time Alan Wake 2 kicks off, we've arrived at that date. There are, of course, plenty of loose threads that are still left dangling as we head into Alan Wake 2. We know Alice is still out there, and that she is possibly being hunted by Mr. Scratch. We know an agent of the FBC, Kieran Estevez, is in Bright Falls, and that something is happening in the town again, which, according to Alan, is a sign that the Dark Presence is gearing up to launch another vicious attack in an attempt to escape from the lake. On top of all that, it also seems like Alex Casey, the fictional detective character that Alan used to write about, has been manifested into reality somehow. How will all of these threads come together? We'll find out soon when Alan Wake 2 launches on October 27th.
that's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.